Yeah, I wanted to have my uh, to have a laptop going, but for some reason, my uh, my son's laptop is via his school, and so they good. um they put a uh, a block on on on, on these type of things. I tried, so okay. Oh, here we go. Back to go live. Okay. disk floating through space with a tiny sun Hey, I'm FTFE. Welcome back to the channel. Does the stupidity what Palpatine did to Alderaan? Thank you everybody for joining me once again for a lovely discussion about the shape of our world in 20 2022. It's fun, right? Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. I hope you enjoyed the video I released recently. Um, my response to the talking monkey known as Daniel Pratt. I'm sorry. Shouldn't insult monkeys. Um, on Friday, <laughs> you will see me on Simon Dan's channel. Um, and at the end of the debate today, I will play you the intro of that video that me and Dan are putting together. Uh, but for today, we have Dave back from last week. Dave is uh, someone that watches Nathan Oakley quite often. Um, and messaged me in the comments saying that uh, what I was saying about sextants was wrong. And we were going to have a discussion about that. Last week, it um, ended up going towards gravity and stuff. And uh, Dave, if you would like to continue talking about gravity, I do have a PhD who would very much like to come on and talk to you. Uh, as well as one of my other subscribers, Drake, um, uh, uh, Drake of Fire, uh, who enjoys talking to flat earthers. But uh, you said that you prepared some more stuff today, so um, oh, not not really. I mean, just I, I'd rather just move on to the sections, like we were talk like we said we would. Yeah. Um, so, just for anyone that didn't see last week, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Oh, um, I'm Dave. I listen to Nathan Oakley. Oh, you've gone really quiet, Dave. Uh, my name's Dave. I listen to Nathan Oakley. Um, was listening to when you and the tune came on. Didn't really appreciate it too much. And uh, I thought it was a, uh, a sideshow. Contacted you, and here we are. Cool. Um, yeah, do try and stay nice and close to the microphone so that we can hear you, Dave, okay? Um, yeah. Funnily enough, Mitchell has actually emailed me and invited me back on to continue the awards show, specifically. Um, I don't know if he asked Nathan Oakley's permission this time, but um, yeah, th there's that. Uh, anyway, um, right, I'd love Dave. To see that <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show it if you like. Uh, where are we, Mitchell? Because he Mitchell emails me at least once, you know, once a day, really. Um, he he does like me quite a lot, and uh, here here he is talking uh, to me about um, uh, periscopes because for some reason he thinks periscopes prove the flat Earth. Um, and do, 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 he actually during this conversation invites me back on 
Uh, alternatively, you can meet me on Nathan Oakley's channel tonight, or I'll be sharing uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can continue to disappoint your own audience. Uh, maybe finish your award ceremony on Nathan's channel instead of answering any questions. Just tell Nathan repeatedly I invited you. So yeah, once again, he's invited me directly to um, present the awards that, that, that he won. But anyway, you know, Mitchell's very strange and we all know that. Um, right, so Dave, why, why don't you go first and give us why you think sextants show that the Earth can only be flat? Well, because you cannot get a uh, elevation angle from a curved adjacent. You can't. And then the last time that we spoke, you did like some bait and switch on me, which I didn't pick up immediately, um, about saying that you can get the angle to a curved surface. Yeah. When you brought up, when you brought up your your bridge example. Yeah. We're not talking about to a curved surface. We're talking about from a curved surface at your feet. You need a flat baseline, right? Who told you, you that? That's Euclidean geometry, right? How do you get an angle with without a flat without a, a straight line? You, you can measure at the vertex line. mostly. That that would be the easy way. Craig, you cannot get you cannot have a curved line to a vertex with a straight line and get an elevation and get an angle. Unless we have corrections applied that adjust that line, of course. Craig, it doesn't work that way, man. You get you get you when, when it, it comes work to, that way. Right. When it comes to the sextant, okay, you mm -hmm. have your star to the GP, Correct. you, 90 degrees. Then Where's the 90 degrees? The star, right from the star. No, to no, the 90 GP. degrees is your zenith. From the star down to the horizon to you will be 90. Wait, so is the 90 to the horizon or to the GP? Or on, on your model of doing celestial navigation, would the, would the 90 degree that you say we need be at the horizon or would it be at the GP of the star? From the star down to the horizon to you will be 90 degrees. That's three things. From the star, one, down to the horizon, it's two, to you, is three. To so get where's, right the, angle, where, where's the GP there? Because you didn't include the GP. You said the star, the horizon, and you. None of those things were the GP. All right, well, why don't we go here? Why, why don't I bounce off of you? Why don't you explain? What, no, I'm, I, I'd be really very interested because maybe you could answer the question of how celestial navigation actually works on the Flat Earth because ever since Flat Earthers decided to claim a globe evidence as evidence of the Flat Earth, we've been asking specifically how do you do the celestial navigation on a Flat Earth? So you, know, you, you can tell us how, how that works. And, you know, the first thing you said you need 90 degrees, but I'm confused as to where that 90 degrees is on the Flat Earth. Is that 90 degrees from you to the GP of the star? Is that 90 degrees from you to the horizon? Is that 90 degrees from the horizon to the GP of the star? You know, please define exactly how we are doing the measurements. From you to the GP to the star will be 90. Right, so what, what do we use the horizon for? See, I, I, I must be not following here. What, do, do, we, mean... do we look at the GP or do we look at the horizon? What is considered, the, if, if you may explain, what would be considered the GP? The GP would be when the star is directly above you, like 90, <clears throat> 90 degrees above your head. You know, if you were well, standing, at, you know, roughly at the North Pole, um, you, know, you, 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 your G, you would basically be very close to the GP of Polaris. It's not exactly the North Pole, but, you know, we use that as an example. If you're standing directly underneath Polaris, where it's directly above your head, 90 degrees, you are standing at the GP of Polaris, right? So the GP of any star is when the star is directly above you. So are we looking, when, on, on your model, to get the, the angle and the, that you need, are you looking at the horizon or are you looking at the GP? You to the horizon to the star. That's what I got. Right, so how do you, from that, get the GP of a star? I'm confused. Why don't you tell me how sextants works then, Craig? 
Do you want me to tell you how it works on a globe? I want you to tell me how a sextant works. How a sextant works? Well, first, no, well, first, first, I want you to tell me how you get a curve, uh, how you get an elevation angle with a curve adjacent at your feet. Well, you don't have an adjacent because there's no triangles. You just have a baseline, I guess. But um, a, again, there's no, there's, there, there, yeah. there's li there literally is no triangles in celestial navigation. And um, I can say this as uh, as a subject matter expert, as as they like to say, because I literally used sextant for years to navigate the oceans, and not once did I ever calculate anything with a triangle, and it worked. So you have you know, the, the cur curved curved adjacent, the whole thing from Oakley is actually a straw man because that's not what we claim to be the case. But <clears throat> getting a angle to a curved baseline is no issue when you understand how refraction and everything works to make corrections, which we have a, you know, an almanac for. The corrections, that, you know, the corrections in the, the nautical almanac have been used for centuries and are, you know, they, they work. They're, they're, they're a finely tuned calibration tool for getting the angle that you need you know getting the flat baseline that you need by taking into account what happens with refraction but that's would not you be ever you so kind to, oh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you would you be ever so kind to pull up a, a diagram of, you, you want you want me to give you a diagram of how it works of the sextant yes correct if you don't a, mind a, just a picture of a sextant or uh how celestial navigation works with a sextant something, something credible where it shows what you are saying in comparison to what I'm saying, because I mean, I, I went on to oceannavigator.com and, and it said, you know, I wrote it. They said at any given distance from the GP, we have a circle of equal altitude all the way around. You, you can't have that on a sphere, Craig. Yeah, you can. It's very easy to get a circle of equal altitude on a sphere. I um, specifically, you know, detailed how to do it in my uh, sextant destroying video um, I did uh, a month or so ago. It's very, very easy to get the GP on cool. on the you, on the globe Earth. Since I'm unable to pull up visuals, why don't why don't you do that for the both of us and your okay, audience? Okay, do you, do you want me on. to like walk you through it step by step? Just if you could pull up a visual of uh, you know to say a, a simple diagram of, of what they're showing, you know the star, the GP, the horizon, all the, you know what I mean. They're, uh, they're, it's very basic from what I from what I looked up, you know, stick figure style. Well, um. I can get, uh, in fact, the things that Flatsoid was using to try and debunk me actually do the opposite. So let me just quickly grab that specific thing. Um, so anyway, um, I, I'm, I'm still very interested to learn on the Flat Earth specifically what to do once you've got that elevation angle, right? So, you know, let, let's say that you, you've got a sextant in your hand and you're on the Flat Earth. Uh, what, what do you do with it? I'm, I'm sorry, couldn't hear you. you said, what do I do with it? I mean, yeah, Craig, we don't, uh, f f as far as I'm concerned, you know, we don't have to go any further than, than the requirement of a flat baseline because you can't have it when you're on, on your earth. You can't okay. on, on your globe earth. Unless you know you how know, to correct for the refraction, of course. If you could pull up a visual, we could bounce off of that. I would totally yeah. appreciate that. Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry, I'm just trying to uh, flat side post a lot of nonsense. So I'm just getting the specific thing that he got. Um, sorry, bear with me. Take your time. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, Flatsoid seems triggered lately, doesn't he, guys? Do 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 do. Dave, the professor. Um. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Uh, do do do. All right, so J told the media stuff. Sorry, guys, bear with me one sec. 
they had a real simple diagram on, on uh, oceannavigator.com. Yeah, I mean, simplifying things is something that is done that, you know, you, you sometimes alter the actual reality of things to, to explain it in a simpler way. Well, no, I mean, I would just, let's just go with the diagram. Let's not, uh, you know, automatically assume it's being simplified. Oh, of course, everything, uh, you know, gets simplified. Uh, right, here we go. Is it that one? Okay. Right, here we go. Do, do, do. Sorry, that took a while. No problem. Right. So here is showing on, you know, doing it on on a sphere, which is is no issue. Um, but that was if the star was nice and close. Uh, uh, this does contain. It explains Sorry. getting the circle of equal altitude. It doesn't have the best diagrams. I'll tell you what, it's probably best if I just draw the diagram for you. Are you there? Let's go with that for now. Yeah. I'm here. Let, let, let. Yeah. We'll go with that for now. Let's see what you got. Right. So, the way it's done on the globe is pretty simple. Okay. So, say this is Earth. And, uh, there's, do, do, do. we say that rays of light reach us parallel. So let's say that we've got parallel light coming in from these points, right? So uh, the point where it's directly on, oh, sorry, let me, right. That would be the GP of the star, right? Because the light would be coming in directly above. So if you if you are up here, right, you would be where, measuring. Where's your, where's your star at? The where's star is all the way over here, all right. So it's where? it's what's creating these rays of light from from way way over to the right, really really really, really really far away. Okay. Okay. Where are you at? All right. You are here at the top. Can you put, can the you put marks? Can yeah, you put marks uh, there yeah. where, where we're at? I'm going to. Uh, Right. So you're here. Okay. All right. Um, Where's the horizon? Uh, well, the horizon for you, all right, in this case, would be there. Oh, well, let's take that down a bit. All right. So the horizon is this tangent line, okay? Okay, but you don't have a tangent, Craig. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. Why don't you have a tangent? Because the, the horizon's not physical. The horizon is physical. You just don't. The horizon see is physical not thing. physical. Black Swan, Craig. Yeah, the horizon is still a physical thing, but refraction changes the apparent position. You can't have an apparent position so without not a physical. physical thing. So, but we only see one horizon. Yeah. Okay. Only... Uh, it doesn't matter because everything we see is coming to us through a medium. Do you agree with that simple fact that everything we see on Earth, the light is coming to us through a medium? I my position is that what, no, no, hold, hold on hold on it's a simple question do you agree that everything we see on earth the light is coming to our eyes through a medium yes or no yes right simple okay that means that everything we see is refracted absolutely everything we see on earth is refracted be it I agree be it the horizon be it a car be it a boat on the sea be it your hand in front of your face. It's refracted. What you are seeing is refracted. That, so doesn't, no mean, lines, that, then, that doesn't mean that it's not a physical hand, right? But you are seeing a refracted image of your hand when it's in front of you because it's come through a medium. The same when you're looking at the horizon. The horizon, the light from the horizon has traveled through a medium, meaning it's refracted. Meaning that we don't see it exactly where it is but it doesn't mean it's not a physical thing we just have to understand how refraction works to be able to calculate actually where it is okay now you said you you said exactly you said you don't see it exactly where it is and you don't see it exactly where it is and it's refracted 
I totally agree. You, you so if, really it's quiet, refracted. Yeah. One second, please. If it's refracted, yeah, you, you've gone quiet. That's what I'm saying. I can't hear. You. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, if it is refract, if it is refracted, then it's not physical. You, the, the, of course. What do you mean? If it's refracted, it's not physical. You can't have something be refracted if the light hasn't come from a physical thing. We don't see the geometric horizon that only exists in the mass. No, well, it exists well, in real well, life, but the light coming from it is refracted. But we don't see the geometric horizon. We only have You don't horizon. see your actual hand, do you? And we're not talking about my hand. We're talking about the horizon. Yeah, but I'm trying to get across the fact that everything we see on Earth, absolutely everything we see whilst we're standing in a medium, the atmosphere, is refracted. Everything. And if it's refracted then you do not have a physical tangent to go. You, you don't have something physical to go to to get that tangent. And that's exactly well. we do have a physical thing, but the light from it is refracted. So to get that tangent that we need, all we need to do is apply the corrections for refraction that we know we because R. refraction has been quantified. You would, then you would need R. And you don't have we, no we have R. R is R's no problem, but you know, we don't need R specifically to understand how refraction works. No, for refraction, no. Refraction yeah. on the globe requires R. No, no, it doesn't. Refraction happens with or without R. And we understand how refraction happens. Okay, but Craig, what do we look at in the sexton? We look at mirrors. Okay, we look at the horizon, correct? Not always, no. Is there, is there not a horizon there on the section? You, you don't need to look at the horizon, though. In you fact, do, well, honestly, not, the I'm majority gonna, gonna of the time, I'm I wouldn't look at the right? horizon. I would look at a reflecting pool. I'm going to hold you to the same standard that you just held me. It's a yes or no question. Is there or is there not a horizon mirror on the section? They can be labeled as a horizon mirror, yes. But you, you, but you do not. You, you, you know. This is just a, a fact about using a sextant or a celestial navigation. You do not need to look at the horizon at all, ever. You can, then, but okay, you, you don't have then, to. Then you would need an artificial horizon. Not necessarily. You just need a reflecting pool of some kind. And Na Royal Navy ships actually, that they, they have sextants like fixed in a position on board and in front of them is a set uh, is a reflecting pool uh with like a gimbal to keep it level um because the majority level, of the time yeah. it's really really hard to see the the horizon so you use the reflecting pool instead to keep it level yes perpendicular that to flat, gravity that 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 okay perpendicular gravity fine level yeah what what would level is would be flat? No, on on Earth, level is conforming to the curvature of the liquid parts of Earth's surface. No, 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 no. Yes, that's level? the actual definition wow. of the of level when when you're on Earth. Oh dear God! I'm, I'm not making that up. That's that's a real thing. The actual definition well, of the word level, the adjective for level when you're talking about Earth is conforming to the curvature of the liquid parts of Earth's surface. True level, according to surveyors, is the curvature of the Earth. Craig, you don't have a physical tangent to go to since you just clean, said it clear as day, yep. refracted, that uh -huh. means not physical. Well, no, it refracted, refracted doesn't mean not physical. You can't sure have does. something that's refracted if there isn't something that's physical. Refracted just means the light that's come to you has come through a medium of some kind. That's right. all and it means. It's not, okay, all right, excuse me. Then all lines are bent. Light, the globe. light tends, well, uh, even if all the Earth, was, even if the Earth was a flat plane, light would tend to bend through the gradient of atmosphere we have. So, I mean, that's the same well, we thing claim, on, on flat Earth or globe Earth. We don't claim terrestrial refraction, Craig. You, you guys do. Well, no, refraction happens. You've agreed with that. And there's, an, there's a medium. Does, yes. Terrestrial refraction. All right, look. There, and there, there's a, is, well, okay, hold on, hold on. Um, no, no, is, no. I is, know is, is there a medium, say? is there a medium on a flat Earth that light has to travel through? Yes or no? Well, I mean, yeah, I guess. Well, does that mean that there is refraction on a flat Earth? 
Where is... Would, would, the, right, uh, let, let me rephrase the question for you. And this is a yes or no question, Dave. Yeah, one sec. Take your time. Sorry, that should come back. Right. So, uh, right. Now, I, I want I wanted to to clarify what 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 we're saying there. Um, okay. Go, on go a ahead. flat Earth, does the light from the horizon travel through a medium to meet your eyes? Um. Well, look. All I know is that when I look at something, I see it. And yeah. Yeah. It. I, 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 absolutely. You guys, but you guys but remember, we've we've agreed. We've agreed that light travels through a medium, right? So on a flat earth, when you are looking at the horizon, right? Because this is how seeing works. You're looking at the light coming from the horizon, okay? So if if the earth is flat, is the light coming from the horizon traveling through a medium to reach your eyes? Uh, I don't know. I, mean, I assume so. Right. Well, that means then that the light coming from the horizon is refracted. But the horizon is not geometric. And the reason is that we know that it's not geometric is because of the black swan. Because if it were geometric, then it could be no more than 1.22 times the square root of the observer's height. And we if you ignore up. refraction, yes. Yeah. No, yeah, not, yeah. not at all. Yeah, yeah, cause, because that that is actually part of the prediction of the globe model with refraction. So, I mean, that, the, 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 what what you what see with the black swan is perfectly possible with refraction on the globe. That's what refraction says will happen. It, it proves it's it's ten times further than geometrically possible. It's refracted, but that means all your lines are bent. No and straight lines. Means that the same means on the flat no earth, though, right? Line, no, no straight tangent. Forget the flat earth, globe earth. We're talking about this. No straight. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about this because you trip, you're going to try to trip me up, and you are. No, you I'm mean, not. But, I'm but just asking questions. You, have, you claim a tangent to the horizon. You don't uh -huh. have a tangent. Because we do. No, it has to be physical, right? You just claim refractive. Yeah, the, 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 the horizon is a physical thing. All lines are it's bent. just refractive. Yeah, uh, it's still the horizon is still a physical thing. The light coming from it is refracted. Luckily, as weather, as I right? have said several times, Dave, uh, and I, you seem to be missing this point. We have refraction adjustment tables specifically for that purpose. Do you do you agree that refraction adjustment tables are used in celestial navigation? Yes or no? I can't say. I well, I can tell you they absolutely are. It's part of the algorithm. You know, there, there's a lot of things you have to do. I mean, you have to apply index error corrections to make sure that, you know, if there's any um, variance between the mirrors or on the sextant, you have to, depending on whether you use an artificial horizon or, or a reflecting pore or something, you have to apply dip okay. correction or dip short of the horizon are, corrections. Okay. You also have to apply um, uh, site reduction corrections and you also specifically have to apply refraction adjustments to then, the angle you, you measure before you actually get your proper angle this is part you, of what you do when you take a sextant reading for celestial navigation using your refraction you adjustment are. tables are a integral part of that process craig if you all lines are bent on your globe nothing yeah. there everything is bent. you just said so that means uh -huh. Uh, it means all we lines are. are bent. It, I mean, light traveling through a medium tends to bend, yes. But again, right. we have refraction we adjustment tables to count for that. And what, what what's the formula that they use for that? Seven over six R, correct? No, it's actually very different. Um, no, in for, fact, for, in, for, for, in 1988, um, the the uh, Glenn A. Martin used the data specifically in the refraction adjustment tables to make an empirical formula. Uh, which ended up mapping to a globe. Um, the the formula in the refraction adjustment tables themselves isn't 7 over 6, sorry, it's something else, but it describes the refraction on Earth, which happens to match with a globe when you map out the data points. See, the refraction, okay. the refraction adjustment tables are something that has been fine-tuned over centuries, right? So... They they found out they found out what was happening with refraction, 
right? And then as they're going along, as they're figuring out celestial navigation, they figure out, right, well, we have to apply this much correction to this for this to work. Oh, for, for this work, when the barometric pressure is like this and I'm at this height, we have to apply this much correction. Oh, well, when it's a bit colder over here in this part of the world, we have to apply this much correction. And over the centuries of countless celestial navigation journeys, those refraction adjustment tables have been fine-tuned. And then the data within them has been used to create a formula which maps to a globe. It wasn't the other way around. They didn't just go, well, the Earth's a globe, so this is what the refraction is going to be. They are fine-tuned calibration tools that have been created over centuries of practical use. And it just so happens that when you map out the data points in them, you get a globe. Right. I don't know about that, but I, I, can't, I can't say anything about that. All I know is that, Greg, you need, you need a flat baseline. You, you keep saying that. Have you got a citation for that? Well, you know, I can't, I can't pull anything up, Greg. Well, uh, could you tell me where there's a citation for it? On OceanNavigator.com, they show it. They show a flat baseline. Absolutely. On all those diagrams, they show it. That's why you didn't pull them up, Craig. And when when you say a flat baseline, uh, where where is the flat baseline? Is it the surface of the Earth? Yes. Right. Where where do you take the sextant readings from? Do you take the sextant readings from the surface of the Earth? You know, damn near. You have to you have to adjust for the, the height of the observer. Aha. Uh -huh. So you, you have. To, dip corrections right maybe what six feet depending on how tall you are uh well or depending on where you take it from you know you're generally going to be more than six feet above the ground uh, you can I have mean, equal, a, a circle of equal altitude for thousands of miles Craig, and you guys claim you know eight inches per mile squared Come no we on. don't oh no no, we, we've tried to tell you guys for ages that that's not the formula for calculating the curve of the Earth. That is something that can give you a chord measurement from A to B, uh, but it is actually something that maps out a parabola and not a, a sphere. The actual formula you'd want to use is H equals, um, R, H equals R times 1 minus cos A. Uh, R? Which Craig? R? R, yes, yeah. R. You yeah. don't have R. Yes, we do. Yeah, it's been no, we times. do not. We argued about this last time. I mean, you can right? keep saying we don't have R, but it's been measured don't have R. countless times. No, we don't. You, yeah, we you do. can't measure R because there's no, there's never going to be a no atmo day, Craig. You but yeah, but it, that's fine. Again, time. like I explained to you last time, we don't need to use the horizon to measure the radius of the Earth. You absolutely need the horizon, Craig. You absolutely do not need the horizon to measure the radius of the Earth. No, because we argued about this last time, because when we did the whole thing with the uh, uh, tubes of water, with Aristoteles and everything like that, he assumed the distance to the sun. No, he just assumed that it was far away. And I can prove that parallels... I can, actually, this is something... I, I can prove to you that sun rays are not parallel. That sun rays are parallel, sorry. No, I can prove parallel. to you. I can prove to you 100% that they are parallel. And how so? Because uh, I've got a video to show you that would show exactly that. Give me one sec. And and there's and there's and there's, I can look outside right now and look at the, and see that they're diverging. Uh, did you do? Where did I put that? You can show me a video. You, you can say video. I'm, I'm I'm looking right out the window and they're diverging. They they're might look like they're diverging, but if you bear with me one what? second. Uh, oh God, where did I put that video? All right. So um, yeah. Absolutely. When you look at sunlight, right, it, it looks like it's diverging. Okay, um, but what what do you think would happen if you know you were to get from a different perspective and look at it? Do you think it would change? Craig, hold on a second. But you keep you keep talking over me and running I didn't away talk from over you once. I'm, okay, excuse me. All right, then just hear me out. You said so yourself. He you assumed the distance no, of the I, sun. No, he just assumed it was far away and the sun rays were parallel, that's all. You just said it in your, say, in your sentence. He assumed it was far away. Yeah, he didn't assume a distance to it. He just assumed that it was oh, far okay. away. He made an assumption. Correct? Yeah, that's fine. We, assumptions are absolutely fine in science. In fact, they're integral. Not in measuring things. Yeah. No? Yeah. You don't just assume... You don't assume... 
the sun is far away. What if he assumed it was close, man? Uh, then he would have got different results. But uh, right, exactly. so I'm what gonna... result would he have gotten, Craig? Let me let me show, let me let me show you something, all right? It would have been diverging, were they not? Would they not? Right. Oh, yeah. right. So he assumed one thing. If you go and assume the other, you get a total different result. That means it's horseshit. Yeah, well, all you got to do is add extra data points to, to demonstrate that's not the case. But anyway, um, wh what would you say was happening? Are these sun rays diverging? And, and are the shadows on those from those bollards, are they diverging? I don't know. They could be. Do, do they look like they're diverging? I can't tell if there's an angle or there's not. What do you mean? I know if I look outside right now, they're diverging. Right, okay. So but now the, what? The, the shadows from these poles, they look like they're diverging, right? From this perspective, those Which shadows time? look I like think... they're going in different directions. Look, over here on the left, it looks like it's pointing to the left. And on the right, it looks like they're pointing to the right, okay? So would you agree that from this perspective, those shadows look like they're diverging? This one particular picture you're showing that looks to you like they're parallel i'm looking well, no, outside no, 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 right no, no, now I'm, Craig. I'm asking you about this specifically right now the image on the screen do those shadows look like they are diverging like i said the ones over here on the left look like they're pointing to the left and ones on the right they look like they're pointing to the right so you would agree with me that these shadows right here look like they are diverging right Somewhat. Uh, look, Craig. Right, okay. Right, well, you, let, let me finish the... Then, then, let me get to my point, right? Yeah. So, you agree they look like they're diverging. However, what happens if you change your perspective? This is from a drone, one of my subscribers. Uh, and let's go back to the beginning. So, this is it from the start, right? And that's the same shadows. Now, they look absolutely 100% parallel, right? Have you not been on a plane before, Craig? Several times, yes, but uh, right. don't change, don't change the subject. Like look, look, at what's, look at what's happening here, right? Would you say that those shadows are now parallel? I guess. Yeah, did they ever stop being parallel, even when it looked like they were diverging? Let's, let's just play that, right? Watch it very closely. From this perspective, you can clearly see the rays coming from the sun are parallel. However... When you get down, and this is a genius video, it really is. When you get down low, the perspective changes, and now it looks like those shadows are diverging. Simple. Yeah, but I've been I've been on plane many times, so have you, Craig. And you, uh -huh. you look out the window, you can see the diverging. Now, I mean, come on, uh, that, that's different one perspective. That's one video. But different perspectives. It's all about perspective. Yeah, I get mm -hmm. that. So how can you say you can't make a definitive? A, a definitive uh, uh, well, we've actually measured the sun distance parallel. now, so it's fine. Excuse me? We've actually measured the distance to the sun several times now, so it's fine. By assuming the... Um, the that radar Venus doesn't need to... The same size no, radar. We've done it with radar. Right. Radar doesn't need to assume anything. We just point the radar at the thing and measure it. I mean, that, that, that's a claim that you're making, Craig. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. Well, it's not they, a claim. Also... It's something that people actually get paid to do for a job. Right. Okay. Um, look, all I know is, Craig, you don't have... You know, we're so far off in, in, in the winds now. Oh, you, even in your own sentence, said he assumes the sun is far. He did assume the sun was far away because it looked exactly, like it was far away. Exactly, Craig. If he's, they... making an, if he's making an assumption, then you can't get something definitive from that. Because if he assumes it's closer, you get a different result. You agree to that. Uh, yeah, but then all you've got to do is add different data points. And we've done it several times in the past 2,500 years. Craig. It's not just done oh. once. You know, uh, In fact, a friend of mine, Sly Sparkane, did it with, uh, I think, 27 different data points from people around the world, and it mapped specifically onto a globe. I would say, Craig, you're, you're assuming things, and then I, you're I'm, like... I'm not assuming anything. Yeah, we've literally measured the distance to the sun. I don't need to make an assumption.
you measure the distance to some radar, but they didn't. Yeah, well, and we've sent probes did, did there they as well. Not know? It, what, wasn't that, it wasn't that the case where they all didn't agree on no the, on the uh, when it when it came back and then all of a sudden poof they agreed on it. I don't know. Uh, no, anyway, that's, that's, um, I think you just made that up there, but no, no, it is. I, I'll have to email you it later because I have to find it on on a different show. Um, Craig, you don't you don't have R. You don't. You we, can keep saying all you want. If you have R, you don't. We've measured R several times. It's fine. Uh, that's not an issue. You need the horizon for R, Craig. No, you, you don't need, need the horizon, horizon for R. R. You do not need the horizon for R. Yes, you absolutely. Who do. told you that? Who told you you need the horizon to measure R? How do you think you could? You are. How do you measure R then? By the me horizon. measuring the segment of a circle. It's quite easy. Measure the segment of a circle. Yeah. So you're assuming, you're assuming, it's a. You're begging the question that that it's no, a, no a begging sphere. the questions. No, because okay. when, you add up, when you add up all the measurements, it matches a sphere. There's no assumptions there. None, none needed at all. Okay. How do you measure the radius of the Earth, since you want to play word games, other without the horizon? Uh, with sticks and shadows. Sticks and shadows. Bullshit. Yeah. You said so yourself. They assumed it. Slice it Barcane didn't it. assume anything. Slice Barcane did it with 27 data points from all over the world. No assumptions well, necessary. It sh literally showed the rays of light were parallel. No assumptions needed. That's just you saying it, Craig. Uh, I, do you want me to show you the experiment that was done and put on YouTube? You can you can send me a link. I can look at it later in, in detail. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's it, it's quite a quite a decent thing. Um, I mean, but you don't have any straight lines on your globe, Craig. That means you don't have a tangent to go. You need. A physical uh, horizon. You, you, to you get keep, that you keep going point. back to that, but you're ignoring the fact that we have refraction adjustment tables specifically for that. Dear God, it's it's just nothing but hand waves with you. It's not a hand really? wave. This is what the refraction adjustment tables are for. That's not a hand wave. We have refraction adjustment tables. Refraction has been quantified. We know how refraction works, and we have tables specifically to adjust for refraction for celestial navigation. Specifically for it. There is a tool designed specifically for that purpose. And you... What would... All right, explain then. So when I... So, so when you go... Explain then. Explain when you're using the sextant, and you take and you and go ahead. Explain. Just okay. explain yourself. Okay. All right. All right. Let's watch the screen. We'll go for it. All right. So, how to use a sextant at sea for celestial navigation? Okay. Um, well, now I do real quick. If I interrupt you, I want you to bring up a diagram other than you drawing it and all that. Bring it up, Craig. Yeah, I can bring, bring up, up plenty, uh, but this is the best uh, way to explain it to you. Just bring it up, Craig. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll explain it to you, and I'll, I'll get all the citations that you want uh, for, for, you know, uh, the ones that Flatsoid gave me are, are, the, are the best ones, actually. But here is, here, this is how it works, all right? The thing is, I, mean, I can explain all... how celestial navigation works. No flat earther can, all right? So that should be something there, all right? So anyway, let's get to the, the, the right point. So here we have little, little sailor on Earth, right? And he wants to measure the angle to the light that's coming in parallel. All right. So over over here by my face, this would be the GP right here. Okay. With the stars directly above it at this point. All right. So this is the GP. But this is where the measurement's being made from over here. Okay. So there's your tangent, which you get by using refraction and you know, dip adjustment corrections because those things exist. Okay. And you measure from the the horizon to where you see the light coming in. And you get 40 degrees in this case. All right. Now, if the Earth's a sphere for celestial navigation, which it would be, all right, we would know that this angle here is going to be the Wait, same. Hold on, where? Where? Right, the, the angle where he's pointing to right now, that 40 degrees, all right? Uh-huh. All right. The angle above it, the, the co, you know, the, the, the co-angle, the, the 50 degrees. Minus 90, correct? Yeah. So, the co so you've got the 40 degrees here, 
all right From which nine. means that the the co-angle that the, this other one here is four is 50 degrees right and if this is 50 degrees it means that this down here is also 50 degrees okay so you got the we know that that angle there is 50 because that angle up there is 50. Well, you're right. going to the center of you guys are you guys are cutting that your globe in half the, and going. That's how celestial navigation works. Yeah, oh. that, that that that's how it works for you to get your your, your details. That's how it's yeah. always worked. Yes, you require a flat plane. No, there's no flat planes here. What? Where's where's the flat plane? I I see a curve here. Do you see this curve? Dude, this thing is a big jumbled mess. This is how it works. This is actually how you do celestial navigation, all right? And then, it, then it's very, then it's very simple, diagram, right? Very, yeah, very, very like simple. All right, Dave. Um, let me finish. Right, it's very simple. So we've got our fifty degrees co, you know, um, co angle, right? We've got our fifty degrees from the from the ninety. Take away the forty, it leaves you fifty. Okay, and then to get your circle of equal altitude, we times we know that on Earth six nine point one miles is one degree. So we times six nine point one by fifty See? degrees. Well, right? It doesn't matter wait, what wait, we say. Hold on, we're, hold we're on. Let, let me finish. Let me finish, Dave. All right? Because you don't, you don't accept Dave, that. Let, let me finish, you... Dave. Let me finish. Right? We know on Earth, in reality, that for every six to nine miles, things in the sky drop by one degree. Right? So that means the surface of the Earth, for every six to nine miles, curves by one degree. Six to nine miles times fifty, which is the angle, means that we have a circle of equal altitude of three thousand four hundred and fifty-five miles away from the GP of Polaris. That is how you get your GP, right? You take the angle, you know, which you take away from the 90. So you've got the 40, take that away from the 90, we get the 50. Then we take that angle, which is the same as the one down here. We know that. And then we times uh -huh. it by 69.1 miles or 60 nautical miles. And that is how we figure out the actual circle of equal altitude, not just an angle. We can and figure how out exactly how many miles we are away from that point on Earth. We are somewhere on Earth that is 3,455 miles away from the GP of this star. And if it's a circle of equal altitude, that means it's flat. 3,000 no, flat miles. Bullshit, Craig. Uh, it literally doesn't. On Earth, the circle of equal altitude is not flat and level. I have a citation for that, if you like. Oh, my God. Go ahead. Uh, this would be the other one. Uh, one sec. Um, do, 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 do. <sighs> You're going to tell me a circle of equal altitude yes. is not flat. Exactly. Well done. Uh, that's exactly what it says. That's ridiculous. I, I, I mean, I've just shown you that it's, you know, not. Uh, and... If we look at the diagram that I've got here, well, you guys go to that center of your uh, center of that sphere and cut this man. See, this is the pull it's up just, a, a how it works. diagram, and not the circle of equal altitude. Here you go. Oh, oh, let me let me get rid of that. Uh, do, 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 do. Sorry, get Honey, well, don't get rid of it. Where are you going? Uh, I'm getting rid of my diagram so you can see the okay. circle of equal altitudes on a sphere. Um, See, we're we're at a stalemate here, Craig. There's really no point of, uh, of going on with this discussion because I say because you don't you have R. You how celestial navigation works. You have R, and then and then you want to claim a, a, a tangent. You don't have a tangent. We we have refraction adjustment tables to give us the tangent. We've gone through that. Oh my! All lines bent, Craig. You don't yeah. have. A, and we I have refraction tangent. adjustment tables. How, why do I have to keep repeating myself? We have refraction adjustment tables specifically to help us adjust for the fact that light bends through a medium. Simple. I, I don't know why that is such an issue for you. We have it. You would need R when it comes to the Earth, Craig. We, we, we have R as well, but you don't specifically you don't need R, R to be able to calculate how refraction works. If and again, and again R, the refraction adjustment have... tables, the refraction adjustment tables were actually fine-tuned calibration tools created over centuries of celestial navigation that you could then actually find R from when you map out the data points. This is just how it works, man. I, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know why you're so mad about it just being how it works. 
Because all you do is you you, you fucking say, excuse my language. You, you you'd say when it comes to R that they he assumed that it was far, but you yeah. just he assumed. We, yeah, okay. We've measured it many times since Eratosthenes. Oh my god. You, you do know that it's been done many more times since Eratosthenes, right? By 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 assuming the size of Venus as well. No, we've done we've measured the, the to Earth many the, the distance to Sun in many many ways, including radar and sending actual things there. Can you show me? What, do you, you want me to show you the video from the Parker Solar Probe? That's quite I would easy. like for you to pull up a citation showing that they used radar to me to, to uh, measure the distance of the sun. Please. Really, I have to provide radar a, a citation for common knowledge. Uh, radar measurements to the sun. Yeah, this is oh, something you shouldn't have to do. Actually... Radar measurements to the sun. Uh, oh, serious summit from Physics Stack Exchange. Uh, let me just see if there's a .edu thing. Oh, here we go. So this is um, radar studies of the sun um, from uh, Harvard.edu, um, and, and you can go and check the entire article for yourself. But this is literally talking about in 1964 they did radar measurements to the sun. So uh, you know that that was just a brief Google search. Again, this is something that's common knowledge, something that I shouldn't have to provide a citation for. All right. Well, look. I don't. I don't feel like getting my blood pressure raised up, Craig. I, I'm gonna go. Okay. Uh, Thanks you, for having you me. You don't, don't want to talk about some gravity with a PhD? Really don't. Not really. Because it's gonna be a. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Put him on. Fuck it. I got a few okay. minutes left. All right. Um. I will bring uh, PhD Tony on. Um. Oh, and talking about PhD Tony, he says that we can actually measure the radius of Earth with the propagation of seismic waves, which is obviously a very good one. Uh, let, let's bring PhD Tony on for you to have a chat about gravity. Uh, um, it, it's nice to see that flat earthers don't have a clue how celestial navigation works. You see, I, I, can, I, can, ex I can explain it from beginning to end. You know, how to get the measurement, uh, what to do with the measurement, how to calculate your position on Earth with the measurement. I, I can do it all. I can use multiple readings from a sextant to determine my position on Earth within a few miles. And it works every time. And it's all based on the globe. The fact that it works based on the globe and that no flat earther has ever been able to show how to actually do it on a flat earth should ring some bells for you. Yeah. I don't know about all that. Anywho, where's Tony at? Yeah, Tony is coming in now. Tony, hello, my friend. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you, Craig? Um, I'm doing doing good. I uh, I quite enjoyed trying to teach basic net special navigation uh, with nothing to answer back to it. But anyway, um, Tony, this is Dave. Um, you were there last week with the conversation about gravity not being a force and stuff. Um, and you had some things you wanted to clarify with him, right? Yeah, I did. Um, and to clarify with you, actually. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I always like to learn if I have said something wrong then, uh, you know, telling me that I am wrong is the best way for me to learn. Uh, and that, that's always fine. Dave, this is uh, PhD Tony. Um, he, Tony, it's uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Dave. Um, so, uh, is there, so I want to discuss um, uh, this whole, whole gravity is not a force thing. Um, okay. uh, if you could provide scientific evidence for gravity, though, first, Tony, I would really appreciate that. That conforms okay, to the we're going method. To, we're, going to have to, we're going to have to start backwards, okay? We're going to have to start by teaching some basic elements of how we analyze the motion of objects, okay? Um, so that we've got some common ground and we can move forward to discussing gravity. All right. So the discussion last week was um, you didn't seem to understand the basics of how we actually analyze um, gravity. Now, I'd like to share my screen, if I may. Uh, yeah, I'll just make sure I've got that turned on two sets. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Dave, what I'd like you to... Um, 
to imagine is that you've been kept in a you're you're in a capsule you're seated in a capsule um, it's dark you all you can see is another capsule and you know how far away that capsule is all right I do or, or i do not you you know how far away it is from you okay okay, okay. yeah uh, but but that's all you know you can't see anything else okay so on this screen you're going to be at A and you're going to be and the, the other capsules at B. And you, can, you can't see any motion, right? The distance is not changing. The angle is not changing. Um, nothing's changing. So now, real quick, just so I can clarify, it isn't changing or I can't tell if it is? It isn't changing. You can okay. tell that it isn't changing. You can measure that distance. Um, you can measure the angle. You, you can tell that the position of that thing isn't changing. Now, does yeah. that mean that object is stationary? Okay, here we have um, the situation where both of the objects are stationary. But you would also get the same, same observations if both objects were moving in the it's, same direction. Right. Right, right. okay. I, I you would that. also... You would also get the same observation if both objects were undergoing the same acceleration, right? If they were moving along the same path, same paths, just offset by a constant amount. Right? So if they were so synchronized, they are, basically, yes. Yes, so if they were synchronized. Okay. Now, imagine that you start seeing the other object accelerate. It's undergoing an acceleration A, all right? Does that mean that it is actually accelerating? Well maybe not maybe you're the one that's undergoing an acceleration in the opposite direction or maybe both of you are undergoing an acceleration um, additional accelerations in addition to the one that you're observing so just because you see something accelerate doesn't mean that it is accelerating right doesn't it, you could be the one that's accelerating you don't know so when we see something accelerate we cannot conclude that it's accelerating. We could be the ones accelerating. And this is the thing that is often misunderstood in gravity, right? Um, uh, so when unsupported objects, unsupported objects um, accelerate downwards, do you agree with that statement? I agree. Um if they are more dense than the medium the end they are in then they go down that's, that's that's that is part of the definition of unsupported if the if the density of the object is sufficiently low that um there is um, significant buoyant force then they are supported by the atmosphere um so that is part of the definition of unsupported um okay. so we agree we agree that an unsupported object um experiences a downward acceleration now well, now hold on now but, but i can let go of a helium balloon and it'll go up yes but a helium balloon is not unsupported a helium balloon is supported by the atmosphere okay if i release the helium balloon inside a vacuum chamber the helium balloon will sink but right okay but what's happening to those gas particles within that helium balloon they're still expanding in all directions you mm, pop that there is balloon. A a, there is a bias to the acceleration. There is a downward force acting even on the even on the atoms inside a helium balloon. Because so it's, a, they are, it's, it's essentially a closed system, and it's going down with that closed system, aka the balloon. If you pop that balloon, those um, will expand in all directions, all vectors, not just down. Yeah, yeah, but but they so you're leaping ahead here, okay? We can explain what we can explain what's going to what's going on with helium um, atoms, right? But where but each helium atom is just as subject to um, the effects of gravitation as you are. So um, yes, they have when that balloon pops, each of those helium atoms has its own velocity. And um, you know there are um, billions and billions and billions of helium atoms inside a balloon, and they whiz around in all sorts of directions with all sorts of um, with lots and lots of velocity. That's what you know gas pressure is. It's a measure of the velocity 
of the atoms or molecules in the gas, um, and they're whizzing around at high speed. And they, they, because there are so many of them, there tends to be a, a you know a very even distribution, and they sort of seem to go out um, in in a sphere. But actually, there there is still a gravitational bias downwards. Each of those atoms is still experiencing a gravitational effect, even though its speed, even though its velocity is let's 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 consider a, a helium a helium atom going straight upwards. There is still a gravitational effect on that helium atom that will slow it down. So uh, even though it starts going upwards, right, it will be slowed down on its upward journey. Negative. Only on uh, you're saying that it's going to run out of what kinetic energy. Yes, I'm saying that it's going to run out of kinetic energy. No, no, it won't. Kinetic energy yes, is an will. infinite. It will not run out of kinetic energy. The only way it'll come, it'll, it'll stop is, is once it hits the walls of its, of a, of, unless it hits no, something. No, no. It doesn't, it doesn't that, run out of kinetic that energy. Is, that, that, is, that is demonstrably untrue. Hold on. Can you give me? Can you bear with me for one minute, please? My son is over there. Can you just give me one minute, please? Yes, I'm sorry. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, Tony. Uh, I always appreciate having a real human being on. How have you been? I've been um, suffering a little bit for the past uh, couple of weeks, but um, uh, you know, headaches and that sort of thing. But I'm sorry to hear that, bud. Um, being ill absolutely sucks. So uh, I hope that you're not too bad at the moment. Uh, well, a bit lightheaded um, today, but maybe uh, maybe it'll improve for me. I mean, I did tell you to not have my Flat Earth Debate um, playlist on, on play all the time. That will give you... Yeah, energy, you know, well, so. it will. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised my head hasn't exploded um, with some of this stuff. Have you? Did you see uh, Professor Dave's debate against Dearth? I just finished watching that um, uh, last night. Uh, Dave, I thought uh, Professor Dave did an outstanding job. Um, Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't think it was given quite enough time to no. um, sort of grind um, uh, dearth into um, a, a more more admissions. But yeah. um, he, he he really is a very skillful and determined um, communicator. Um, Absolutely, so. uh, I, I I prepped him for the debate um, by giving him like uh, you know a twenty page document of Durf's standard arguments that we've all heard over and over and over. So he knew what Durf was going to say, and um, yeah. I I thought he did absolutely amazingly. He's coming on the channel on Friday to do a breakdown of the debate with me, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. Oh, that that should be really good. Um, yeah. Pleased. Please forward my personal congratulations. I was very I will, impressed. Absolutely. With the... I thought, considering that was his first debate, that was his first time actually speaking to a flat earther. Um, I think Dirth agreed to debate him because Dirth assumed that he was an easy mark because he'd never uh, spoken not... to a flat earther. I'm sorry. I'm not Dave. sure. But no problem. No problem, Dave. Real life comes first, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, Dave, let's. Let, you you asked for scientific proof of gravity, and now you're talking about helium. Let's go with yeah, but, scientific. But one, but with one second. Though, no, let no. Let's go with scientific proof. Go ahead, I can scientific. answer your. Okay, I can answer your questions about helium atoms and your queries about helium atoms once we have determined scientifically the nature of gravity. Okay. Go ahead. I'm all ears. That makes sense. All right, so we have, we have two hypotheses for what's going on with gravity, right? One is the um, standard scientific hypothesis that, um, uh, that uh, mass attracts mass. That mass every mass... mass. Is, uh, bigger pardon? I apologize. Go ahead, I'm listening. I'll let you get it out. I'm okay, it out. and we have your hypothesis that things fall... Um, uh, because of the um, because of density variations within the atmosphere. Well, let's go. I, I just want I, let's. I just want scientific evidence for gravity. Please. Okay. Just, All right. Just, now, just, now, now we're I'm going sorry. to. Okay. Now we're going to. Um, now we're going to uh, examine 
uh, a, an application of gravity that should be able to distinguish between these two hypotheses, right? But the only thing is, is so, that you say that mass attracts mass, but Newtonian gravity was superseded by Einstein. It's the bending of a conceptual medium. Have you read Einstein's 1916 paper? Have I read it? Yeah. He, he said on there, I feign no hypotheses, did he not? No. No, that was what Newton no? said. So the, uh, so oh, the, said um, so um, a sim it's a simple yes or no question. Have you read Einstein's 1916 paper? No, I haven't. Uh, okay, I have. I the math equation. There is a section, there is a section 21 where, which is dedicated to making sure that his theory um, agrees with Einsteinian theory. Um, formula 69 to 71. In fact, let me bring up the presentation that I, um, uh, that I made on this. Well, um, Einstein's um, equations don't, don't account for more than one mass. Yes, they do. I told you that. So you're telling me, you're, you're telling me that, so that you can, by using Einstein's equations only, you can uh, describe a pencil falling down. By you lifting yes. up a pencil and dropping it down. You, yes. In, in, in his paper, it's only that his equations don't break down. In the paper you haven't read. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. Go ahead. In, in the paper you haven't read, you are claiming that um, he did things that are untrue. Okay. Um, does, so, I, I you know, I, you're, you're commenting... You are commenting on a paper whose contents you, you are commenting authoritatively on a paper you simply have not read. And I'm going to ask you on what basis you're assuming this authority, this um, assuming to have any information on which to do this. Go ahead. I'm all, I'm all yours, Tone. I won't interrupt you. Go ahead. Okay. So we can. Um, uh, you know, so do you want to see, um, do you want to go and see that Einstein actually made sure that his theory agreed with Newton? Because when you claim that that isn't true, you were repeating a lie that you had been told. In particular, that you were re repeating a lie that you have been told by Oakley, Quantum Eraser and Anthony Riley. They lied to you, right? So let's go and look at the, um, so let's bring up the presentation I did um, on this particular subject. Um, and, you know, it's not your fault that you were told a lie, okay? But I'm here to tell you that that is a lie and you should not um, believe them. <clears throat> just okay, like the lie at the United States flag base thing. I'll just get a, I'll just uh, share the, um, share my screen. Okay, so the key question, so this is the paper. Um, uh, there's also another paper on, on line. So here I am quoting in black um, from section 21, Newton's theory as a first approximation. So he considers the case when gravitational fields are relatively weak and well behaved and when the speed of everything in the system is much slower than the speed of light. In other words, everything, um, e everything that is true of Earth, okay, everything that is true on Earth. So things aren't moving very fast, the gravitational field isn't that strong, um, and the gravitational field is well behaved. So in black, we follow, the, these are direct quotes from Einstein's um, section 21. And in red down the bottom, Einstein's statement, this approximation should lead to Newton's theory. Einstein was very clear 
that if his theory did not agree with Newton's theory on Earth or in um, appropriate systems, then his theory would be inaccurate. So he took care, he took great care um, to do this. And continuing on, equation 67, he gives the gravitational acceleration in these terms as a, and then he relates gravitational acceleration to um, gravitational potential. Um, so, and then he says the equations 67 and 68 together are equivalent to Newton's theory of gravitation. He then goes on to make sure that his physical constant in equation 69, his physical constant is related to the gravitational constant. Now, normally we, we, um, we call Newton's gravitational constant G, but in Einstein's notation, that is capital K. So he makes sure that his theory is exactly consistent with Newton's theory. So the claim that Einstein is incompatible with Newtonian theory or that Newtonian theory can no longer be applied in suitable physical systems is a lie. It is a well, where's basic the, where's misrep the, misrepresentation well, of the facts. Okay, but where's the experiment proving it? Proving Okay. It. So... Eddington experiment um, in 1919, that one works, right? So the, um, what do you want proven? Do you want the um, I want scientific evidence for gravity via the scientific method. Okay, all right, excellent. Thank you for asking that. Um, we'll go up to, um, I have some, uh, I have another presentation um, on that. You're so prepared, Tony, I should take notes. Well, I did presentations on my, you know, I have done presentations. For the record, guys, I only got about 10 minutes left. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, just a second, and I'm wasting valuable time trying to find this presentation. Um, oh, actually, maybe they're in there. Oh, what's that? that? Was that coming from you guys, or is that outside my house? No, it's coming from one of you. Okay. You, you all right there, Dave? I'm here. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, um, uh, so what we, uh, just give me one second here, sorry, I'm trying to find this and I can't. I know there's a particular demonstration that I want. What's the name of the experiment, Tony? Um, well, actually I give two dozen separate, actually, why don't we do this? Okay, just give me, there are... Okay, so, um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to Google scholarly articles, um, experimental validation of Newtonian gravity. Okay. Uh, I did this search and I managed to get a... Oh, God. I'm better off... Sorry for this. I'm better off uh, with my presentation because actually I did it all um, in the um, in the same. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I mean, there there is lots of you know it, experiments. Yeah, there are a lot of the scientific method. 
that that can verify gravity. Um, no, I mean, it, it's not. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, okay, here we go. So. Sorry, found it. For the record. Okay. Go ahead, Tony. All right. So here we go. Paik 1979, new null experiment to test the inverse square, inverse square law of gravitation. Dynamical test of the law of gravitation. Test of the inverse square law of gravitation in the range of 0.1 meter. Experimental test of the law of gravitation. Experimental test of the gravitation inverse law for mass separations from 2 to 105 centimeters. Dynamic null experiment to test the law of gravitation. Test of the law of gravitation at small accelerations. Test of the inverse square law of gravity on a 465 meter tall tower. A test of Newton's law of gravitation using the Bren Tower, Nevada. Testing Newton's law in the Megat water reservoir. Testing the inverse square law of gravity. I know what you're showing there, but you're not giving any specifics, Tony. You're not giving me any... No, it's not my job to give you specifics, in fact. Um, if you want specifics, you can read the papers. It's well, not asking for scientific job. evidence for gravity, not for you just this to is provide science, the, uh, This is scientific evidence for gravity. So what this are those independent, exactly. independent variables for that, Tony? For that um, experiment? The, what, are, yeah. what are the independent, uh, okay. independent variables for the experiment? Well, we would have gotten to this half an hour ago if you hadn't constantly disrupted the conversation. Why are you getting angry? The independent, I'm, I am trying to answer your Why questions. Why are you You keep on asking questions and then... Because you keep interrupting me. And maybe if I let you know that I'm annoyed, you will stop doing it. I think you got a vein popping out, dude. Um, yes, because now you're being flippant and obstructive. You claim that you want to learn something, and as soon as I try and teach you anything, I ask for you immediately try it. You, you, you constant, and you're doing it again. I asked for the fucking experiment, and then that would so. Yes, you, and I was in me. the middle of this. I was in the middle of describing one, and all of a sudden, you wanted to talk about Einstein. Okay. So Tony, let's the last, so how the last about few minutes. you be quiet? Okay, be look. Quiet let's, let's, let's make this real easy. Give me an experiment. An experiment works. Give me an experiment. Be quiet, and I will describe an experiment. For fuck's sake, be Tony. Be quiet. Be quiet, and I will describe an experiment. So okay. I'm asking for what the fuck is the problem? All right, let's, All right. Let, let, him, let him describe the we, experiment then. We can test the rate at which things fall, and use that rate to do, we we use that rate to identify a hidden mass. We can then go over and a hidden mass distribution. So under our theory. If our theory is correct, then the rate at which an object falls should vary if you vary the mass distribution. I want so an independent and dependent variable. Cause and okay, effect so relationship. The, so, the ind, so the observable here is the rate at which things fall. That is the dependent variable, right? The, and that's what we observe. That's, uh, but what we can to what we can control in particular you know, in laboratory settings or in field settings is the distribution of mass. So we can change the distribution of mass, and we can see what effect that has on the gravitational acceler acceleration experienced by objects. Right. So we 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 put a visor between the mass and the accelerometer, the, the thing that's measuring the rate at which things fall. So, so the thing... To... Your, your deep end of variable, and me and Craig argued about this last week, and Craig, you were wrong, to be honest with you, because I wrote it down. Where is I it? wasn't wrong. No, you said that natural and science had everything that it was everything and, you know, in yeah, the known na universe. Natural and science means anything yeah, his, of physical his, matter his, or his, energy. Yeah, well, Google natural is, phenomenon right now and bring it up. Yeah, or you, or you could Google natural in science instead and be a bit more specific. Well, no, a yeah. natural phenomenon is step one. So what are your scientific yeah, and, 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 and natural what in is, science means a specific thing. What are your, what are your, scientific, what are your scientific qualifications, Dave? What? You are now telling every professional scientist on the planet that they are not that they don't know what science is. 
So what are your scientific what? credentials? Natural, natural scientists. What are your scientific credentials? On what basis? On what basis are, are what you is, presuming it's to irrelevant. take it's the irrelevant professional scientists? Okay, no, it is this way. Professional scientists do not agree with you. Okay. Okay. Uh, the scientific bodies and the scientific Can I get a fucking word out, Tony? Jesus Christ. No. no. Jesus no. Christ. Let, it, let Tony no. finish first. The scientific journal... The scientists, the scientific journals, and the scientific bodies of the entire world disagree with you, Dave. You know okay, what that means? Me for, You're wrong. Can I speak? You're just. Can I say something then? Go on then. Is it, uh, is it not cause and effect relationship? If this, then this. So yeah, if, just, the, if it will be the independent variable, then will be the dependent variable. Okay. So yeah. you're saying that. Things fall down. What's the cause of yeah. that? What's the independent variable of that? Not well, the rate. Can, the actual. You're saying that they go. No, that's no. The, the independent down. variable What's is the just the cause of it going like, down. Dave, hold on. The independent variable is just the thing that you, to use flat earth terminology, manipulate. The thing that you can change. And in Tony's exper experiment, no, it means describing, yes. You, you, you uh, in, wait, wait, yes, wait. Let me finish. You, you interrupted cause, me. You interrupted okay? me. You interrupted me. In Good. Tony's experiment, the thing that you manipulate, the independent variable, is the yes. distribution of mass. But the independent variable in an experiment is the cause of the yeah, dependent yeah, yeah. variable. So the agree? independent variable, the distribution of mass, will affect the de dependent variable, the, the, the rate at which it falls. All right? So you change one thing, the distribution of mass, and that causes a change in the dependent variable. I okay. need to DV, cause and effect, so exactly what you want. So you're telling me, so, okay, so well, when you said drop a pencil, remember, Craig? You said, oh, why, why does that thing go down? Why does it go down, Craig? What, or, or, or excuse me, Tony, I, I don't mean to say that. I was just using you as an example. What is, what's the independent variable, the, di the distribution of mass? Yes. You're saying we just told you that, yeah. cause yeah. of gravity is the distribution of energy is energy density distribution yeah that is uh, that that's what that's what influences that's what influences the um the gravitation now craig did you not now, tell me last time that we spoke that that there was a force acting on that pencil to bring it down i said that you have an acceleration on a mass therefore you have a force because f equals ma okay Right, so what I just said, so you have a force. Okay, you said that. So, but gravity is not a force. We went through this, did and then you said... Did not say that gravity is a force. Excuse me? Yeah, did let's... Not, let's did not say that gravity is a force. But you just... I it, have a... And this is the... That, look, it went... Uh, that a force goes... Right, right, right. Go ahead. Let, go let, ahead. Let, Tony is the expert here, so... Fair enough, go ahead. Fair enough, go ahead. Okay, so you remember back to what I started um, discussing um, earlier... You know, uh, when, when I first came on, right? You remember that example that I first came on where um, where you can see a ball, right? And you, you see, so, so this is, so imagine you're A again and the dropping pencil is um, B. So it's experiencing an acceleration. Right, no, it's not a downward acceleration in this diagram, but imagine that it is a downward acceleration. Um, uh, so um, that's the Newtonian view. In that view, the body B is experiencing an acceleration and it's going downward at A. Um, the Einsteinian um, uh, view is this one. Actually, the body B is not undergoing an acceleration. What's happening is that you're undergoing, you you, the, the ground, um, everything around you, you're the ones going, undergoing an acceleration, right? Um, and these two things are equivalent, right? These two situations, you're going to get the same um, uh, model for the relative motion of A versus B. They're the same situation. So um, you, can, you can get an accurate answer if you, if you use this model. This is the Newtonian so you, model. When you say acceleration, when you say acceleration, do you mean a force? 
No, acceleration is um, changing. So I'm in an acceler I'm in an acceleration. So here's the thing. Hold on, no, no. But is it acceleration, not a force? No. What um, no. And this is the and this is the and this is the thing. So if we're in Newton's laws, if we're in a Newtonian framework like this, Newton says if Newton says Newton says if you see an acceleration, that means that that body is undergoing a force. Um, uh, Einstein says this, if you see a body accelerating, you can't tell anything about the forces, about what forces are being applied to what. Um, all you can tell is that that thing's being accelerated relative to you. That's what relativity is all about. I understand so, you're saying that, but you're still, uh, you're still implying a force. You can you can accurately model it as a force, but in fact, in in an Einsteinian formulation, um, you know, a more correct formulation, there is no necessary force. Uh, you know, there there is no force acting on the on the. Well, there are forces acting on the pencil. Well, you guys are saying them. that there's that since it's accelerating, then a force is being applied. No. That is exactly not what I'm saying, and I have never said anything remotely similar to that. What I'm saying is that in a Newtonian theory, in Newtonian theory, under a Newtonian formulation, there is a force due to gravity. And you will get, you will get accurate answers if you apply that theory. Under Einsteinian theory, you can't tell. All you can tell is the difference in the force that's being applied to the pencil and is being applied to you. That's you just said a difference in the force. You, you just you hold on. Hold on. You do, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to go on what you just said. You just said a difference in the force. What yes. force? Okay, the reaction force from the ground, the buoyant force from the atmosphere, um, air resistance from the atmosphere, radiation pressure. So the sum of all forces um, acting. None on of those you, are. None of those are forces. Yeah, they are. Yes, they are. So show me where it says, uh, 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 a citation where it says a ground is a force. Weight. You, weight weight oh is a force. Weight, weight no. is the force of the ground on you. Weight is a force. Yes. Yes. Weight is literally described, described as mass times the weight gravitational is acceleration. Is no, hold on. The, the, the weight is not weight, wait, one hold of on, Weight, Weight is not let me finish. one of the five Dave, forces. Dave, Dave, let me finish. Let me finish. Weight is literally described as mass, your mass, or the mass of anything, times the gravitational acceler uh, you know, acceleration that it's under. That is the exact same as saying I, the F equals MA. A force equals a mass times an acceleration. If you have a mass that is accelerating in the Newtonian world, you can calculate the force involved. It's as simple as that. Okay. The, so to, to answer to answer Dave's to answer Dave's question, weight is the um, weight is the um, sum of the electromagnetic and um, uh, strong and weak nuclear forces of the ground. So we're talking about electromagnetism, not gravity. Oh my God! No. You just said is a result of electromagnetic. Well, let him finish what you're saying no. before you jump uh, in. If you so if you will let me finish, okay, it, you... I just wanted the cause of uh, the experiment that shows the cause of gravity. Uh, well, um, and I provided one, and you have conveniently ignored it. All you said was the... If we, change, was, if we change the mass distribution, we change the motion, we change the gravitational motion induced in test masters. That's what Cavendish... Um, uh, demonstrates, it's what Shahelian demonstrates, it's what gravimeters demonstrate. And we use gravimeters every single day in practical oh, applications. We use, gra we use gravimetric analysis to locate underwater um, mineral deposits. We use gravimetric analysis to navigate submarines around um, obstacles on the ocean floor. We Just because you could calculate something doesn't mean there's scientific evidence of said but something. If the, but if, the, if, the, if Newton's theory of gravitation were wrong, we couldn't do the calculations. The calculations would be meaningless. We rely on the correctness of Newton's law of gravitation 
or the accuracy of Newton's law of gravitation in the um, circumstances where we're applying it to get our results. If that is not true, then our analysis cannot work. The fact that our analyses work indicates that the theory is correct or at least no. accurate just enough. You have a math, just because you get a math equation, equation to work doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's, it's a math equation. It's not just that it's a math equation that works, Dave, right? For, for instance, what? it's not just that it's a math equation that works. It's practical application of something. For instance, we use everything that Tony's talking about. Uh, you know, um, the gravimeter is of a particular design. Newton's law of gravitation. Submarines use that to literally, in real time, map the floor underneath them by measuring the change, it, you know, in a gravitational acceleration of a test mass w within a chamber. You know, a very specific one designed for a submarine. But they use that. Oh. They, they use literal, you know, gravity as we understand it and the laws of universal gravitation to, in real time, map the floor underneath them. So they, they, yeah, they don't not crash just, into mountains. Not just, the, yeah, not just, just because the floor, you guys say the, 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 So if mass, then mass attracts mass. Mass attracts mass, yes. That's been uh, no, very, if, experimentally so verified. If mass, then mass attracts mass. If what, sorry? If mass, then mass attracts mass? Well, that's a nonsensical it, bunch of uh, words you just put we, together. So that's what you're okay. saying? No, no, look. There are there are fundamental natures. There, there are fundamental laws of reality, right? Like um, uh, electromagnetic force. Um, you know the, the 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 structure of the atom. There are these fundamental things. We can't turn those off, right? We cannot turn off um, weak nuclear force. We cannot turn off strong nuclear force. We cannot turn off electromagnetic force. It's always there to some extent, right? We cannot turn these force, things off. So, 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 so. Come um, <laughs> on, man! You always got to smile on that one. Gravity's not a force. You can't turn. Look, I gotta go, guys. We're gonna argue all you want. But we, but, but it's, it's but it's exactly the same thing, right? We cannot turn the influence of gravity off. We cannot stop mass attracting mass. It just happens. We so cannot, you're saying that gravity is a force, but it's not. No, I'm not. No I never said that. that. You just said gravitational force, did you not? No, I never did. And no? as I explained last time, that's, you know, you could, like, you, you can have Craig, the force. Last time you also right, said right, listen, the listen, you can have the force. Is, right, is right, Dave, 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 you can have the force created by an engine. Does that mean your engine is a force? Or is it just the force of the engine because the engine did something else? Just like gravity is not a force. Gravity creates the force that we can measure. All right. Look, I appreciate you having me on, Craig, again. I really do have to go. Okay. Um, no, I'll uh, take the loss. Yeah, I'll very, very much so. I, I do hope they replay yeah. this on the on so, Oakley's show. Um, I'm going to send uh, you some stuff about experimental verification of gravity because you did not understand anything we said. Okay, uh, and I will give you my word. I'll look at it. Okay, cool. Thanks for coming, Dave. Cody, it was nice meeting you. Sorry for the, you know, testiness, but I appreciate okay. it. Uh, my apologies. I, I don't take kindly to being interrupted when I'm talking, but I, I, I overreacted. Sorry for That's that. Right. I hope you have a wonderful day. Subject that, uh, that gets a rise out of all of us, yeah. it seems. But, yep. You know, regardless of our position, you know, we have more and, uh, and more to worry about Dave, in the world. Dave, don't sure. forget to ask Mitchell why he lied to Nathan. That's a very important question. If I speak to him, I will. <laughs> Catch you later. Okay. You guys take okay. care. All right. Tony. Yo, uh, Craig. Yes. Craig, can you hear me? Yo. Don't, don't beat me up too much with the clips, man. <laughs> you know something coming, right? Easy. All right, buddy. See you later. Yeah. Um, Tony, so you said that I got some things wrong. Please educate me. So, um, you know, when you when you talk about uh, when you talked about uh, gravitational force, I just, you know, it's you can m just make clear in a Newtonian framework, we can treat gravity as a force. We'll get an exactly we'll get a very accurate answer, uh, extremely accurate, accurate to within our ability to observe it. Yeah. Um, but to describe yeah. gravity as a force is incorrect under, under an Einsteinian formulation. So the, the thing was that you, you, you talked about gravitational force, which would be valid if you said, look, let's look at this in a Newtonian framework. 
and that's all that that's the thing that I think you need to sort yeah of work I do need to clarify, clarify when yeah. when I'm using the word force that I, I need to be I, and, but I, I, I think that's an the issue they have is is differentiating between talking in a Newtonian framework and talking in an Einsteinian framework they aren't able to uh, look at the same thing in different ways but more specifically I think yeah the motion of the falling object is a consequence of the difference in force yeah. in in the difference in forces that that are being applied to the falling object and the differences in forces that are being applied to the observer right yeah. so it's a difference in forces and as long as that difference in forces is the same um you're going to get the same answer right yeah. so in that in that context it doesn't matter right it doesn't matter if the thing falling is the one experiencing the force or if the observer standing on the ground is experiencing force because the difference of the difference in forces is the same in both circumstances you get the same particle you get the same motion of the falling perceived relative motion of the falling object so um it's that difference in forces that's being applied to both that um uh that is being applied so in in the um in the newtonian theory it's the falling object is is experiencing the force in the einsteinian um theory you're the one that's experiencing an, an upward um uh, force due to the ground underneath you that stops you from moving along your geodesic through space time yeah um anyway and i, I always did have an issue visualizing that um for a very long time because it's yeah. not an intuitive thing to think it's not an intuitive way to to imagine the world because for us it's not the way we experience things we experience things in a newtonian framework yeah and, and so it, it, that, that makes it harder for people like flat earthers to look at it from the other framework and i do understand that to a degree but they just take they take it further they take that not understanding and proudly display their ignorance as truth instead it's yeah so uh, i mean clive wells brings up an excellent point um that you know really they shouldn't be bothering you know they should no. be trying to understand newtonian um newtonian yeah. gravity before moving to einsteinian gravity which is exactly correct um but it's the um but uh, again it doesn't really matter it's only the difference in force between the two bodies that's really important so if you step back and you don't you don't describe gravitational motion as a force or not you just look at the difference in acceleration between the two bodies um yeah. uh then then i think that that's a um uh uh, uh that, that that's a very that's a very interesting um you know i think that that's a more constructive way to do it that's why i started with that thought experiment of you know just looking yeah. at something it's because you can see something that's stationary relative to you it doesn't say anything about the forces that are being applied um, to either of you. As long as those forces are the same for both of you, um, you're not going to see any relative motion. As soon as you see relative motion, you, you still don't know um, what the, what's going on. You only know that the difference in the forces being applied to you and the observed object are such as to explain that motion. That's a really good way of describing it. Yeah. So, um, uh, so it's that it's that it's that relative relative difference in forces. Yeah. Um, uh, Clive, uh, Clive, Clive Wells is right that they they shouldn't worry about Einsteinian because even you know as a physics undergrad do, doing your BSc, you, you you barely even touch that. You know, that it's really not something that you want to learn unless you want to specialize in that area of things. And they just think that everyone, even high schoolers, should be taught Einsteinian gravity, the Einsteinian version of things when. You really don't need to know that for the world that we live in, you know. It's all, it's also rather mind bending and very very yeah. complicated. Like we don't we don't teach third graders calculus, um, no. uh, you know, which they you know multivariate um, n dimensional calculus, which is what we would need in order to get them through Einsteinian theory. It's also a non linear theory um, yeah. in that the um you know the energy distribution changes as you um uh changes as the system evolves which changes gravity which change you know so everything is changing um so it's it's it you know in in order to deal with things in full complexity is extremely difficult and this is why newtonian theory um is uh, still used um in uh you know uh, sort of uh uh it is still used in relativity because in many circumstances you can get the right answer in relativity 
by using a slight modification, you know, a sort of Taylor series expansion around the Newtonian limit. So, you know, the, the, um, the Newtonian limit is still used in, um, uh, in science today um, to get uh, relativistic answers. Yeah, because we don't really need to think about things at the speed of light. You know, that's, that's, not, the, that's not the world that we live in. On Earth, we're never going to really encounter that. You know, it's not... Yeah, you could get the answer using Einstein's tensor equations and, and, and you know, Einsteinian theory. But you don't need to do that. You can get the yes. answer that you need using a much simpler method because it works. Yes. <laughs> so... Um, I'm unaware of... I'm unaware um, Vadim asked a question about um, Cavendish with not metal weights emerged in a pulsating electromagnetic field. No, I'm unaware of anything of that sort. Um, uh, but, you know, well... Um, actually, uh, actually, to some extent, I am. Um, we uh, we do gravimetrically, we do use gravity measurements to locate subsurface water. Water is not um, uh, not metallic, um, and we're in Earth's uh, electromagnetic field. Um, water is conductive, but there are other, you know, non-oil, um, for instance. Oil is not very... Um, we do use gravity to identify these non, um, non-conductive material, non, non-conductive density um, anomalies um, inside Earth's, gravi- Earth's magnetic field, which is constantly changing. So yeah. we kind of do that, do that in, the fi- in the field anyway. Now, Daniel Pratt thinks that Earth's magnetic field that's constantly changing can cause the drift of a pendulum to correlate to your latitude on earth apparently no matter the material that the pendulum is made of as well so uh yeah well that's that's exactly right and i mean you know um uh uh daniel pratt did in his video you know mention uh, uh static when really he meant electrostatic yeah of course uh, and, uh, and electromagnetic forces um, which is a which is a decent question to ask but you can do the you can do the same you know uh, one of the one of the ways we can demonstrate um, sort of gravity is actually using pendulums. Um, one of the original um, uh, mappings of this was by Yotwash from the Yotwash effect, who mapped the bottom of a uh, the 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 bottom topography of a large pond that had been frozen over by moving a pendulum around it and noting the rate um, how the rate of the pendulum changed. As he moved wow. it around the pond, um, so this was this was the first sort of gravimetric um, uh, experiment. But yeah, um, yeah, he also uh, used the yeah. uh, the Indian Trading Company uh, and their ships traveling east and west to measure the rotation of the Earth. Uh, mm. And and you just you can it, you know the the period of a pendulum is not changed by the density of the object on the pendulum. It's no. not changed by whether, it's not significantly affected by whether or not it's conductive or, um, or non-conductive. It doesn't matter. Um, it just, um, it just depends on the mass. Um, you know, you need to be very careful with pendulums. I've tried doing some experiments, but yeah, they, um, they, if, if you don't account for all the variables and even the, the pivot point that it goes from needs to be, you know, make sure that there's nothing that's going to affect the the way that it's swinging. You've got to make sure that when you release it, you don't put any kind of forces, or you end up with like an elliptical orbit. It it's a it can be a difficult experiment to get right because you have yeah. to account um, for a lot of things. But once it's done right, you yeah. get the same result every single time. Yes, and 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 it is done quite often. Um, also, yeah. uh, you know, Daniel Pratt is a um, talking monkey. Is a, well, we're all monkeys. Um, you know, uh, uh, we, we're all monkeys. We're all apes. Um, so, you know, calling him a talking monkey, I, I prefer to think of him as, you know, uh, uh, vaguely man-shaped Ebola. Uh, he, <laughs> he's, a, he's a singularly toxic individual with, um, with deep-seated um, mental health issues. Yeah. Anyone that's ever loved him was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's the other one too. Um, uh, um, I was writing my script for that video and I'd finished it. And then my wife came across a, um, 
an article about the best insults and she just read off some amazing ones that I had to just include in it. Like um, thicker than a Boxing Day poo and things like that. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, he, 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 people do come up with some really good ones. Yeah. Um, uh, well, thank you very much for coming on, Tony. Uh, and um, I, I especially appreciate when people correct me because you know that's the only way that you get to learn is when people tell you that you're wrong. Um, and you uh, know, I mean. Not not wrong. Wrong is a bit wrong is a bit of an overstatement. Um, you were a bit imprecise in how imprecise, you phrase yeah. things. It's difficult um, talking yeah. to flowers as well because you have to balance being as precise as possible with being as simple as possible. And unfortunately, yeah. when you try to be simple, you can also be imprecise. It's it's a very fine line yeah. to tread. But um, I, yeah, I do appreciate and... your expertise as always, Tony. Thank you very very much. All right. No, no problem. Uh, take care, Craig. Um, uh, I'll, and I'll, I'll uh, speak to you soon. Um, I hope you enjoy the discussion with Professor Dave on Friday. I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, I, I, I'll definitely be here. Um, all, right. all right. Take care. Thank you, later. Thank you very much for coming on. Bud. Bye. Bye. Well, um, th that was awesome, guys. I really enjoyed that. Thank you to PhD Tony for um, giving his expertise, as always. I know that Jacob Fire uh, and Ash wanted to come on. Um, I'll, be, I'll be doing a, a stream probably this weekend um, and I'll get some guys on just have a bit of a laugh so hopefully we'll get some more of you on then um, I've had a good time tonight I've been really 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 busy this week uh, editing my video that you, you saw out recently um, editing my Simon Dan collab which is out on Friday um, finishing off the script for my next episode of Flirts Are Idiots which I'm doing with Brainy Beaver um, been discussing with Professor Dave the, the stream that we're going to have on Friday going over his debate with Dirth um, and then we're going to take that video that the stream that we do and I'm going to edit it up and make it all nice and we're going to release that as a video on Dave's channel um, and as we all know Dave gets millions of views with his flat earth stuff so hopefully that'll help me <laughs> which is always nice um, so very 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 busy got a couple more debates planned over the next week or so as well um, like I said I know I was away for a while I, I was terribly terribly ill I've had everything from some really quite debilitating mental health issues to uh, serious concussion, norovirus, coronavirus. I've really fucking suffered. Uh, I'm back on form uh, and I'm working hard to bring you the best flirt busting content in the world. Uh, I'm going to read Super Chats and I want to say thank you to everybody um, for the support that you show. It's never... I can, it blows my mind. Um, Kalia, Agility Partner, uh, linked to Professor Dave Debate. Just go to his channel. Um, look for his, uh, it's titled like uh, Humiliating Dearth or something. Um, but we're having a discussion about it on this channel on Friday. Professor Dave is amazing. Um, and then Monday, uh, we're bringing back the D&D &D campaign. Um, I need to have a chat with the Dungeon Master to sort that out. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I am going to show you the preview of the Simon Dan cutout. I'm going to read Super Chats, and then I will show you that before we finish. Uh, DL1 for $5. Is this the one who thought it doesn't count as an observation if you use math? Yeah, they always demand the that we use the scientific method, then complain when we use the scientific method because it doesn't match what they think the scientific method is. They, they don't think that my observation can be whatever the fuck I want. I observed something. The lighter fell towards the ground. It accelerated. Meant by meters per second. I observed that. That's my observation. We don't need to go any further, you know? And then I can form a hypothesis from it. They don't understand the scientific method, but complain profusely about not using the scientific method. Uh, then another one for $2. I giggle every time I hear the word sextant. Yes, they are not te tense for having sex in. Connor Silver, a member for 15 months, says, I'm confused. If only every flirt was this honest... But then if they were, we wouldn't have so many great jokes to make fun of on a regular basis. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention that's coming out soon is my debate shorts um, that have been produced by Glober Mum. Um, she's in the chat, and if you aren't subscribed to her, then please go and do that. Uh, Jake the Surgeon, $5. Dave, how can we know that pterosaurs fly if no human has seen one alive? I guess we don't know that pterosaurs flew, to be fair, right? Um... I mean, dynamically and engineering-wise, it looks like they could fly. But at the same time, we've just assumed this whole time that dinosaurs were like giant lizards. 
but recent studies show that they were more like giant birds. Like, a T-Rex would have basically been a massive chicken, which sounds fucking terrifying to me. Why kick a moo cow, eight five 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 dollars how do you use stars to navigate on a non-existent map? Yeah, so you know, it's that I kept asking him, so how is celestial navigation done? He had no fucking idea. Yeah, I can describe it from beginning to end. And he just kept going back to, but you don't have a tangent. You don't have a flat line. You don't have a tangent. Yeah, I do. And we've got refraction tables to help us with that. You're just going to ignore that. Right, I see. Um, Norman Dixon, $5. You can visualize a circle of equal altitude using a ball and a pen flashlight. Shine the light on the ball. It will form a circle. Uh, yeah, they, they just deny that you can have a circle on a sphere. And that is, that is something they've said. Um, they've said you can't do trigonometry without triangles. So, you know. Tommy Gronville for 20 knocks, uh, twenty Nokias. Discord DM, a SketchUp somatic screenshot to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I luckily I've got my... Uh, this is the... Um, the the schoolroom, the, the classroom bit that I made, I made for that episode. And I've just taken out the green screen so I can display it over me. Which is actually quite helpful. Uh, but thank you, Tommy. Delel, member for two months, says, Eyes are notoriously unreliable, so we use tools. Yeah, my eyes fucking suck. Philosopher King Gaming, member for 15 months, says, Happy 420 day, FTFE. I don't know why I'm saying it. It's only been, I've only been a member for a month. I don't know why it says that. But yeah, um, I have been celebrating 420 whilst we've been doing the stream. Don't worry. Uh, Ashmaker is a new member. Thank you very much, buddy. Tim Tully for $10 level. We can explain it to you, but we can't understand it for you. No, I don't have the crayons, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Unlocked, who's been a member for 20 months, says, Craig, I might sue you for causing a loss of brain cells. Please speak to my legal team. Jake the Surgeon for $5. If an animal has hollow bones, feathers, a gizzard, and walks on two legs, it's a safe assumption the animal is a dinosaur. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to make any assumptions about dinosaurs. What would you guys rather fight? Okay. Um... A hundred chicken-sized dinosaurs, or one dinosaur-sized chicken? Think about it. Gibson, give them Basher $5. As they say, genius has its limits, but stupidity doesn't. Uh, design song one for $5. Congrats, Dave. You ignored R, refraction, parallel shadows, and seismic waves. You win a substandard understanding of the world in which you live. That's just what they have all of the time. Um... Design song one for five dollars. Congrat no, I just read that one. Neil Pathman. Um Neil Pal Freeman. Pal Freeman? I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Member for six months, thank you. The purple crayon is strong with this one. I've heard purple is their favourite for breakfast. Flat Earther uh Gibbon Basher for five dollars says Flat Earther. Einstein and every other scientist that has walked the earth and has done thousands of hours of research is wrong. And I am right. Because reasons, I guess. Uh, STD Construction for $5 says, Keep up the fight, brother. Don't worry, I always will. Marty Mad Scientist, who's been a member for 19 months, says, Darn, I overslept. Resurrecting is tough work. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> Jesus died and came back three days later. The guy got pissed and then woke up in a cave. Come on. Uh, Kit McGuire199 says, PhD Tony is the goat. Crack a Tony for the win. Um, JD899 says, Love you, love you more. Give him Bastard for five dollars. Dave smashed his neighbor's car window out of anger of badly losing this debate. Yeah, what was that? It sounded like someone was playing GTA. T Rex is a dinosaur sized chicken. If they ever make a T Rex, it will be from forgotten dormant genes in the chicken, oddly enough, FTFE, says Matt Lee of Fours. Yeah, yeah, that's terrifying. Please don't bring back dinosaurs. Uh, San, sadly not now for one ninety nine says Cheers from the US FTFE. You won the debate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Luke Farwalker, five dollars, five euros, says, I want to say thank you, FTFE and PhD Tony. I learned more science through you and the stupidity of flat earthers than in my school years. Well, I guess what I'm doing is working then. Uh, Connell Silverfer for ten dollars says, I am ignorant of a great deal. I am ignorant of a great deal of subject matter Tony and FTFE discuss. The difference between ignorance and stupidity is this. Ignorant people can learn. Stupid people like Dave choose not to. Golden Knight says, have you ever ch kicked a chicken in Skyrim? Yeah, don't do that. That always works out badly. Eon Dust for $5, uh, 5 Australian dollars says, come on, sweeties. You can't expect a flurf to put effort into learning something on their own. You're lucky if they even hold the phone the right way up. You're lucky if they don't poke their eye out with a spoon when eating breakfast. Knights and Castles for $5. 
Jeez, force that fool to inject oil into some water. Density around is equal. Still the oil would go up. How the hell the oil know where the up is? Gravity. You fucking retards. Gravity. You ever heard of fucking gravity? Gravity. Uh, Technics one for two dollars Canadian. Amazing presentation, Tony. Thank you. Yes, Tony, you are the goat. Mr. Toffee has been a member for five months. Says no hope for this Muppet. Brad Wegner, member for fifteen months. Says I've been a member for way more than a month. Yeah, I don't know why it's ten of the members only been a member for a month. Um, just ignore that. You haven't. And thank you for being members. Honestly, Ashmaker five dollars. Here is some more bribe. Hey, Tony, love the way you destroy these stupid flatters. Love you too, Craig. I'll get you on soon, Ash. Do not worry. Draco Fire for two dollars. Funny how long ten minutes seems to last, isn't it? When you're talking to a flat earther, it does last a while. Gibbon Basher five dollars says lol rage quit. Um, I don't know. I think he just needed to leave, but we we'll say rage quit. Graham Price been a member for twenty four months says vaguely man shaped Ebola. Fucking burn of the year. <laughs> now I had a poll going, guys. Uh, I'm gonna give you ten seconds to vote. Uh, the poll is who would win in the fight, Nathan Oakley or Eric Dubay. It's 50-50 right now. Let's see. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Come on, last chance to vote. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. End poll. Who would win in the fight? Nathan Oakley or Eric Dubay? And the answer is 49% for Eric Dubay, 51% for Nathan Oakley. So Nathan Oakley could take Eric Dubay in a fight. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of fun tonight, guys. Like I said, on Friday, I have a collaboration with Simon Dan on his channel. Um, it's a video about Kevin, the, the um, rotation denier. And before we go tonight, I am going to play you the intro as a little treat. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the members and everything. If you would like to help support the channel, please, please share what I do on Facebook and Twitter. Um, make sure you have watched the recent video and check out Simon Dan's channel in a couple of days. Make sure you come back on Friday for my discussion with Professor Dave. New debate on Monday. New episode of Flurfs Are Idiots. Debate shorts. Lots coming. Remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. And now collecting the Nobel Prize for Physics for the absolute destruction. And now collecting the Nobel Prize for Physics for the absolute destruction of the flat earth. Simon Dan! Oh, Sagan, I've overslept. Oh, God. Oh. Right, um... Flat Earth Friday. Um, I've got that meeting with NASA in 30 minutes. I'm going to need some help. Ah, good. Fight the Flat Earth. I need your help. Dan, I was driving. Don't worry, it'll be fine. I, I had my whole family in the car. Anyway, I'm pushed for time. I need someone to write a Flat Earth Friday script for me. Dan, I was on the motorway. I was towing a camper van. So I'll be back from my meeting with NASA in about two hours, so I'll need a script ready to go so I can record then, all right? Can I, can I at least be in the video? Ooh, I mean, I guess so, if you have to be. Thanks, that's, that's something, I guess. Uh, you, you do know that teleporter you've got is, is for emergencies only, right? Every time you use it, it costs so much they have to delay Artemis by six months, and it, it actually raises the temperature of the Earth by about half a degree. This was an emergency. I've not missed a Flat Earth Friday since I've started this channel. Okay, um, yeah. Anyway, just, just, just send me back and I'll get started. Oh yeah, sure. And next time, Dan, just, just phone me.
night, Tony. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, Ragebot, for being awesome as always. Thank you, JCNet, for being the flat earther that enjoys my content. Connor Silverfer, Ashmaker, Drippy Wiener, uh, Bishop Hex and Masturbator, Zumi, Genocidal Pacifist, Ryan Greger, Truth Nerd, Pat in the Cat, Heat Shield, Mandalore, Set. Thank you all for being awesome. Bye bye, George Hannes. Remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flatter. 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 Fight the flatter.